Well, the Reds played last night. Tasia, did you catch the game? I did, and it was pretty exciting. Justin, did you get a chance to watch it last night? Well, I definitely saw it. And before they left for Milwaukee, the Reds lost five games in a row. So they were hoping to turn things around. And by now, I'm sure we all know about Brian Price's pregame tirade on Monday. But for all the heat that he's gotten from the media, it seems like this rant has really lit a fire under his team. Last night, the Reds hit not one, but two grand slams on their way to a 16-10 win over the Milwaukee Brewers. Yeah, you heard me right, 16-10. The first grand slam came off the bat of Jay Bruce in the top of the third to give the Reds a 4-0 lead. But the Brewers scored four runs of their own in the bottom half of the inning to tie the game at four apiece. That wasn't the end of the action, as Todd, the Todd father Frazier, cranked out his first career grand slam the very next inning. This is the first time that the Reds have belted two grand slams in the same game since 1999 when they beat the Montreal Expos, who don't exist anymore. When all was said and done, the two teams combined for seven home runs and three grand slams, which tied a major league record. And while the Reds looked like they were playing the slugfest video game, the Indians relied on seven pitchers to beat the White Sox 6-2 on the road. After being hit with a line drive in the face less than a week ago, Carlos Carrasco came back last night in a big way. The starting pitcher struck out eight batters and only allowed four hits in five innings of work. The Tribe bullpen took it from there as six relievers combined allowed just four hits and one run to give Cleveland the win. And while the NHL playoffs are in full swing, hockey players and skaters at Bird Arena on Ohio University's campus might have to take a break from their sports. Newswatch at Noon reporter Danielle Podlaski went to the rink to find out why. Ohio University's Bird Arena may look the same on the outside, but some new features have been added to the inside, or should I say taken away. The ice at Bird has been removed for the summer months and all that is left is slushy cement. The rink was a field house before it was renovated in the 50s, but those upgrades didn't include roof insulation. Assistant Director of Campus Recreation, Joe Wakeley, says if the ice were kept in place, it wouldn't be able to be skated on. The firmness of the ice, ice temperatures for skating is usually kept in the, in the teens, uh, depending on the type of skating that, that's being done. Um, but for, this, for our ice purposes here, um, it would more, become more of a slush and really wouldn't be quality skating. The first step for the crew is to turn the giant compressors off, which cold air is pumped through. The crew then cuts the ice down and locates the drains. Bird Arena employees not only need to worry about the ice, but also what's on the ice. These mesh logos over here are taken directly from the center circle and are laid out in the next couple weeks to dry. The logos are cut out by using hot water that sprays out of tubes. The blue and red lines are then vacuumed or scraped up. Fans are placed on the ice to warm the surface and dry the remaining water. Once the water is gone, the staff repairs the floor and touches up the holes in the cement. When the ice is removed, team and recreational skaters find other areas to practice at or just rest during the summer. The closest ice rinks are Charleston, which is about 45 minutes away, and then um, Columbus, which chillers and all those, it's about an hour and 15 minutes away. But some of the higher level skaters do go to Columbus and take lessons over the summer, but for the most part, the kids have to take a three month break. The compressors at Bird are expected to be turned back on at the end of July, with new ice formed in August to welcome back figure skaters and hockey players for the start of the school year. For Newswatch at Noon, I'm Danielle Pothoski. Also during the summer, Bird Arena takes the time to organize the concession stand and pro shop, as well as begin planning the events and programs that will start back up in the fall. And one Ohio team that didn't have success on the diamond last night was the women's softball team. The Bobcats gave up six runs in the first inning on their way to losing 12-4 to Ohio State. The Buckeyes went on to score two runs apiece in the second, fourth, and fifth innings to breeze to the eight-run win. Ohio State second baseman Alex Bain crushed two home runs, while Erica Leonard went three for four to lead the Buckeyes. And while softball lost on the road, the Ohio baseball team shut out Eastern Kentucky at Bob Rand Stadium to improve their record to 23-15. and now, much like the Indians game I just talked about, Ohio used six pitchers to blank the Colonels. This is the Bobcats' first shutout in nearly two years when Ohio beat Bowling Green back on April 29, 2012. And Jake Madsen led the offense with a three-run home run. And from the Bobcats to the Spartans, Alexander took down the Athens Bulldogs 7-5 yesterday. Alexander was led by Brody McGrath, who went 3-4 for four with two RBIs and recorded his 100th career hit. The win gave the Spartans a one-game lead in the TVC Ohio. And the NBA playoffs are heating up, and the Cavaliers took a 2-0 series lead over the Boston Celtics after winning last night 99-91.
Boston came out aggressive in the first half and looked like a different team on defense compared to game one. But Cleveland was able to take a one-point lead heading into halftime, and from there, the Cavs never looked back. LeBron James scored 30 points, with 15 of them coming in the fourth quarter, while Kyrie Irving also added nine in the fourth, finishing with 26 points and 10 rebounds. Irving and James were the only players to score in the fourth quarter for the Cavs. Cleveland is now 2-0 in the series, and 94% of teams that win the first two games in the opening round go on to win the series. And now breaking news, less than two hours ago, the Cincinnati Bengals signed head coach Marvin Lewis to a one-year contract extension, which will run through the 2016 season. Now guys, much like 2015, Marvin Lewis was signed to a one-year extension, and he lost in the playoffs again. He's now 0-6 in the playoffs, so he's still going to be under pressure for this next year. Thanks, Justin. I'm interested to see how they do this upcoming season. It should be interesting. We'll see how Andy Dalton fares, too. Thanks Thank so much. You.